Hi, everybody. Welcome to our DATIQ Weekly Market Update. This is our update for April 2nd, episode 286. Uh, somewhat unusual circumstances today. It's just me. Um, Ken Adamo is not well. He's uh, at home uh, resting up, and our guest has uh, been unable, unable to make it this morning. So it's just me. So uh, fire off those questions. We can answer those as best we can towards the end of the show. Um, for those new to the program, we're here every Tuesday, 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific, talking about trends in the freight market. Uh, the long-form version of today's market update will be published this evening at our uh, blog website, just go to dat.com forward slash market update. A lot of the charts and commentary will be in there also. So get your questions in. We've got a team in the back in the background uh, looking to answer those questions for you. They tend to pile up. Um, so let's get started with some of the key trends that we're watching this week. Uh, spot rates um, are tracking along with seasonal trends. There is some evidence that seasonality is starting to emerge again. Uh, van and reefer rates were flat to down slightly over the course of the week. We'll dig into some of the impacts of the Baltimore market a little bit later. Uh, flatbed rates were up. Again, no surprise there. As uh, planting, nursery, construction, produce seasons uh, all start to emerge in the uh, latter part of March, early part of April. Uh, we did notice that the uh, end of quarter one, interstate carrier exits slowed significantly. They're down about 12% over the first quarter. Um, surprisingly, uh, new entrants and reactivations of authorities are up about 20% over the first quarter also. The net of uh, the first quarter's activity uh, in terms of carrier authorization status changes was that the number of exits almost equal the number of entries, the first time that's happened since uh, October of 2022. Um, Baltimore freight market, we had saw some early chaos in the market last week after the tragic bridge collapse. Things tended to stabilise by the week's end. Um, there was sufficient available truckload capacity to meet surging load volumes that we'll dig into as we get to the individual equipment types. So let's start the market update with uh, load to truck ratio in dry van. Load post volumes were up about 6% last week. Uh, up about 17% over the last month and sitting about 3% higher year over year. Uh, ongoing carrier exits uh, from the industry have resulted in decreased available capacity. Uh, load to truck ratio did move up last week largely because of the increase in volume, uh, up 22% to 4.4, 4.00 exactly. In refrigerated, load post volume uh, decreased last week. Again, no surprise there it is the slack season in produce. Uh, volumes are sitting about 1% higher than last year. Uh, there is some signs that produce season is off to a late start, but some numbers are pretty encouraging. According to the USDA, the truckload produce volumes are about 3% higher than last year after a prolonged start to the season, mostly in California. Uh, capacity decreased also last week. We had 11% drop in equipment posts. Load to truck ratio up 11% to 5.53. In flatbed, um, after increasing for the past seven weeks, flatbed load post volumes were flat last week and about 7% lower than last year. Capacity decreased also down about 10% as we measure it by equipment posts. Load to truck ratio up by 11% to 22.03. Having a look at some of our markets, uh, this week we'll focus on Baltimore naturally. Uh, Baltimore's not a major dry van truckload freight market. It ranked 29 out of 135 spot markets last week. Uh, following the bridge collapse, the impact on the dry van spot market saw capacity loosen. Outbound Baltimore spot rates were down slightly, dropping two cents a mile to $1.33. Remember, that's excluding fuel. That's line haul only. Uh, so rates down two cents to $1.33. Loads moved were 12% higher week over week. Uh, Maryland state average spot rate is sitting at about $1.51. It was down two cents a mile, also identical to this time in 2019. Uh, on a number of long-haul lanes west of Chicago, out of Baltimore, loads moved were up 18%, while line haul rates inched higher, increasing by just a penny per mile, averaging a dollar and three from Baltimore to Chicago. Um, that's slightly lower than the 12-month average for the 700-mile haul. Uh, on the number two lane out of Baltimore for dry van to South Bend, Indiana, loads moved were down 6%, line haul rates up by four cents to a dollar 14. And the third highest volume of loads moved out of Baltimore was to Indianapolis. Volumes were up 13% last week. Spot rates up nine cents a mile to a dollar 29. In the refrigerated market, um, we're having a look this week at the Pacific Northwest as the produce season passes its late February uh, peak. There's typically a peak out of there this time of the year. We do see pretty good volumes. 
Um, last week, volumes were down about 1%. Uh, line haul rates starting to cool. Um, regional volumes in the Pacific Northwest were impacted the most by the 23% increase in loads moved in Twin Falls. So there were some individual markets that showed some late season movement. Uh, line haul rates were down $0.04 cents a mile, though, to 215 on higher volume. It's a sign that there is an excess of capacity in the Twin Falls market. Um, in the larger Washington market, loads moved were up 1%, while spot rates dropped $0.02 cents a mile to $1.84. Uh, one of the major lanes out of the Pacific Northwest, Spokane to Los Angeles, was paying carriers an average of $1.47. That's down $0.13 cents a mile last week, but sitting about $0.12 cents a mile higher than last year. At $1.85 per mile, loads from Twin Falls to Los Angeles are paying around $0.10 cents a mile lower than last year and sitting about $0.71 cents a mile lower than the late February shipping peak out of that market uh, when it was $2.56 a mile. So we're heading into the cooler part of the season up there following the uh, big season they've had out of the Pacific Northwest for produce, shifting further south to Fresno in California, one of the largest produce markets on the West Coast. Um, that season is just starting to get going. Um, there was a 14% increase in loads moved out of Fresno last week. Line haul rates up $0.04 cents a mile to $2.14. We'll have a look at flatbed now. Again, uh, we'll have a look at Baltimore in particular for flatbed. It's a major flatbed spot market, consistently ranks in the top 10 this time of the year. Um, it's the number one port for roll-on, roll-off imports of machinery, um, farming machinery, think hay balers, um, wood chipping machines, tractors, combine harvesters, rubber tie dozers, all those sorts of things come into Baltimore. This is the peak season for shipping out of that port. Um, last week's bridge collapse saw a surge in loads moved in flatbed, up 57% week over week. There was sufficient available capacity, though, to meet the market surge. Line haul rates dropped on average five cents a mile across the market for flatbed. At a lane level, those, the impact on spot rates was mixed. There was a surge in line haul rates early last week on crucial lanes as the market processed the impact of the bridge collapse, uh, including Baltimore to Chicago flatbed. Loads moved were up 117% last week. Spot rates up 25 cents a mile, averaging $2.03. That's Baltimore, Chicago. Um, on the Baltimore, Gary, Indiana steel market lane, loads moved and line haul rates surged last week. Spot rates were up 23 cents a mile on that lane to $2.02. .02. And line haul rates to nearby South Bend, Indiana were flat. In contrast, paying carriers an average of $1.98. Even though the volume of Detroit loads uh, moved was also up substantially, line haul rates dropped 13 cents a mile to 2.14. So some mixed results out of Baltimore last week on high volume lanes. Uh, regional lanes to Charlotte, North Carolina, for example, loads moved up 21% last week, line haul rates up 3 cents a mile to $1.96. And now wrapping up our market update with our look at uh, spot rates year over year, the national average dry van line haul rate remained flat last week at $1.59. That's 10 cents a mile lower than this time last year and sitting about 2 cents a mile higher than in 2019, which on your chart is, a, is the light green colour on the line graph. In uh, refrigerated, after being primarily flat for the last month, reefer spot rates decreased by just two cents a mile last week. Again, that's not, unsur not unsurprising. This time of the year, we normally see some cooling off before the produce season gets going mid-April. Uh, the volume of loads moved in reefer last week up 12%. At $1.88 per mile, reef and line haul rates are sitting about 11 cents a mile lower than last year, and on the chart, about 3 cents a mile higher than the green line, which is 2019. And lastly, in flatbed, the volume of loads moved increased by 9% last week nationally, uh, up 12% in the last month, and about 8% higher than this time last year. Um, capacity continues to tighten in flatbed. Again, that's pretty much what we see seasonally this time of the year. Spot rates are up just a penny per mile last week, averaging $2.03. Um, on the chart, flatbed rates are about 15 cents a mile lower than this time last year, which is the black line, and sitting about 3 cents a mile lower than the green line, which is 2019. So that's it for our market update. Um, if you want to find out more about what's happening in freight, um, go to dat.com forward slash market update this evening. Uh, later this evening, it'll be posted. Um, that'll be our long form version of the report, including charts and graphs and more words around my commentary. So let's uh, get to the next part of the show, which is the forecast. Um, for those new to the show, the, um, the forecast is uh, a range of colors depending on the forecast type. 
The blue line is a rolling seven-day weighted moving average of historical rates. These are loads moved over 550 miles excluding fuel, so they're line haul only. Our flagship model is Ratecast. It's in all of our products. It's the green line. The red is the short-term model. That heavily weights more recent data. And then you have the yellow and gray, which are blends of the two in varying degrees. So let's start off with dry van. Uh, we're still seeing some model disagreement over the next two weeks. Um, the short-term model expects line haul rates to decrease slightly uh, before improving in the first week of May. Uh, I think given the exodus of long-haul capacity in the spot market, the short-term uh, forecast is the most likely scenario. We are definitely seeing rates bottom out and start to have some upward inflection. Uh, the exodus of capacity in the spot market is uh, significant, especially over the first quarter. Uh, I'll be writing about that in next week's blog, including posting the chart that will give you some numbers around what we're seeing in the spot market. Uh, let's go to refrigerated. Uh, produce season in the southeast is just starting. Early season strawberries are being picked. The um, cold weather is having a little bit of an impact on peach blossoms, but so far the news is all good for the start of produce season. Uh, but we're not seeing any meaningful volumes just yet to move the national rate needle. That won't happen until May. Uh, that makes the rate cast in green the most likely scenario uh, in the short term, um, given the strong seasonal patterns that produce season exerts on the market uh, towards the end of this month. Uh, once we see uh, Vidalia Onion pack date announced, we'll know that we're at the official start of the produce season. Uh, that should happen sometime in the next couple of weeks. We'll be reporting on that also, maybe next week or the week after. And lastly, in flatbed, uh, rate bar, Ratecast is expecting rates to decrease by about five cents per mile over the next four weeks. Um, in a soft freight market, spot rates typically cool uh, mid-May after the spring surge is over. Um, but in strong years, um, such as 2018, for example, a very strong flatbed year, rates kept going well into the summer. So there's a good chance that if capacity is exited in a sufficient number, that the red short term is going to be the most likely outcome in the flatbed market. That's where I'm putting my money at the moment, even though the green is starting to pick up on some of the more uh, longer term seasonal factors there. I think the exodus of capacity is going to shorten um, the uh, decrease in rates and maybe the red line is going to be closer to where we land um, in four weeks' time. So um, that's it for the market update. Um, if you've got some questions, fire them off. Um, nothing in the channel at the moment. Um, I will put some call-outs out there. Um, I'm on Sales Chatter again tomorrow with Dan Deegan, 11 a.m. Eastern. It's day-to-day -day Wednesday. Uh, we'll be talking in depth about the capacity exodus out of the industry and what we're seeing in the market. Uh, Robert Rouse is, as always, on Landline Now on Wednesday, 7 p.m. on Sirius XM Channel 146 Road Dog Radio. On the current edition of Freight Vine, which is out, um, I think on the 4th, maybe uh, this week, certainly, Chris Kaplis is talking to DAT's very own Cali Federer, discussing about how artificial intelligence is used in rating. On our show next week, we have Tim DeNoyer from ACT Research. He'll be talking about all things trucks and trailer orders, used truck prices, um, truck cancellations, and in particular, what the five-year forecast looks like for equipment orders. And, uh, and I'll be on with Jimmy Mack on uh, Sirius XM next week on Thursday, as always. And if there's no questions, uh, that brings us to the end of the show. Be safe, everyone. Uh, be nice to each other. We'll talk to you same time, same place next week.